station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is the station. I'm ready for the event. ESA, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Palazzo Kiji in Rome. How do you hear me? Guten Morgen, Carmen. I hear you loud and clear. How about me? All good. I hand now over to Prime Minister Conte. Buongiorno, Colonnello Parmitano. Che piacere vederla. Ci dica se giorno o notte sulla Stazione Spaziale Internazionale, lo dico a beneficio di tutti, in 24 ore voi avete 16 albe e 16 tramonti. 16 dawns and 16 sunsets, this is uh, Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte. Signor Presidente, benvenuto a bordo della Stazione Spaziale Mr. Prime Minister, good morning and welcome to the International Space Station, more uh, specifically the Columbus module, our European contribution. We just went over the uh, Terminator, so the line that goes from night to day, so we just said the dawn, and we're right over the coast of North America, going into the Atlantic in su southeast direction, moving towards Brazil's coast and then down towards the South Atlantic. What a great emotion. It sounds like uh, science fiction movies, but here it's not science fiction, it's uh, technology. I confess that I'm particularly emotional seeing one of our representatives on the International Space Station whom I consider the outpost of humanity in space and also a major engineering feat as it was explained to me that is going around the planet at 28,000 kilometers per hour at uh, 400 kilometers of altitude. Uh, we have some uh, great guests. We have the Honorable Ricardo Fracaro who coordinates the uh, space politics, and then President Roberto Chieppa, who's Secretary General of the uh, government, and then the uh, Chief of Staff, Alberto Rosso, and Admiral Massagli, who covers matters of uh, space and aerospace. And we have another guest, Mr. Werner, who is the uh, director of ESA, the European Space Station. As you know, we have a law here in Italy, L Law 7 of 2018, that reorganized the governance of sp space matters and this gives whoever speaks to the uh, Prime Minister uh, great purview and also established a comet, a committee for uh, politics for space and aerospace. There are 12 ministers as well as a president and this allowed us to make a big jump ahead in terms of space policy. And now we, we have the efficacy of this great governance that also allowed us to cover a more important role in this field, even in European and international policy. And we, we had over $2.2 billion in contribution. We are the, in the third spot as the uh, contributor to ESA. We had a council with ESA last year, and we're continuing to invest even in the uh, optional programs. 
even compared to what we were doing in 2016. So we're, we're very much involved because we believe that the national and international programs, especially those connected to ESA, with whom we work with for over 50 years, but it's a strategic sector for us because participating in this uh, field of technology, so not only effort, mental, but this allows us to develop a, uh, a greater knowledge about our planet. And now you're going to tell us a little bit about it. You're going to explain to us a little bit about the universe that we're in and the potential of exploration that comes from space. And we, we have to say also in terms of applications to the benefit of citizens and uh, security and institutions. We guarantee the 16% of contributions on future efforts. And so the government will continue to make such a contribution. And I have to say that in this sector, we are demonstrating, as in other sectors, that we know what we're doing. So there's, no only, there's not only the uh, Italian system, but it also has to do with our industry. So there's an Italian system, a European system that's working really well. And this can generate growth and employment, development, and innovation. But now I have a lot of curiosity. You, you have to let us let it out. I'd like to ask, in less than a month, if I'm not mistaken, February 6th, your experience will conclude your mission. It's a mission that saw you in the middle with great responsibilities and effort because the commander of the station, for the first time in Italian, it hasn't happened before. Can you tell us already do you f to, to make a statement about this uh, experience? Mr. President, first of all, thank you for expressing in, in a very thorough way many of the things that, as far as I'm concerned, space represents. Everything that the importance ge uh, geopolitical, economical, and strategic of space, of course, aside from, obviously, the technological and scientific, scientific one, which is our core business. First, I'd like to take advantage of one second to say hello to all the guests whom I have had the uh, pleasure of meeting. I struggle to think about the entire mission today because we have extremely three extremely busy operations, two EVAs to complete the upgrade of the power distribution system of the International Space Station. So we're installing new batteries, lithium batteries, that this year they won the Nobel Prize. And then an additional EVA to complete the activation of our, our alpha magnetic spectrometer, the AMS, which has great Italian participation. So we, we have almost a month ahead of us that's extremely difficult. But what I can say that until now, the entire mission, even before my command and the part where I've been acting as commander, these months have been that they've had some incredible months in the quantity of work that was done. And I believe that my crew, and in this case, I'm going to set myself aside because it's not, it's not my merit, but it's my crew's merit. You know, we're talking about teamwork. We are an important example of teamwork, not, not just the, uh, the crew 
on board, but even the one on the ground that allowed us to complete some records of utilization. So in terms of how much science we've been able to execute in one week and one, one month. We, we hit a record with uh, EVAs by renovating the batteries with the first EVA since I got here, and then the repair of the AMS. And finally, a record number of experiments here on board, thanks to the arrival of a record number of vehicles for uh, resupply that allowed us to really rapidly exchange uh, science experiments that we do here on board. And then if you allow me, I'd like to make some examples that link back to what you've talked about in terms of effects of uh, scientific discovery down on Earth from what we do here on board. Yes, but obviously you talked about your activities, the, your extravehicular activity, those are hazardous. In those moments, did you need to confront with some difficulties that you felt were really hazardous? And then I'd like to know and understand how you, your test pilot in the Air Force, how your experience came in handy. I will answer easily to the first question. Extravehicular activities always have a very high component of risk. I myself have felt this on my own skin in my first mission six years ago during my second EVA when my spacesuit had a failure, causing water to come into my helmet, putting my life in danger. So by comparison, these EVAs that I've done this round and, and, and the three that I've done this far, even though the difficulty level was much higher, we did not have any issues from a technical standpoint, only, only that of the work itself, which has been done for the very first time. The, the type of work that we performed to repair the AMS was especially designed for this kind of activity. It was never done before. We installed a new cooling pump by connecting tubing, cooling tubing, so we had to cut the existing tubing and then connect them in a, in a permanent way. So definitely very difficult due to the kind of materials that we utilized, the tools that were designed especially for this over the last four to five years on Earth, the training that my colleague and I received was uh, very important. An aspect that was particularly difficult was that I worked almost exclusively from the Canadian robotic arm. So this means that during the majority of this time, I was connected to the ISS exclusively through an interface that locks my feet to the robot arm. And then I, I can swivel from the station. So in case of danger, there are some additional risks to be able to come back and egress, uh, ingress into the airlock. So all this means that there is a very specific ground training so that you can set aside all thoughts of fear and difficulty and just concentrate on the task at hand. So I would like to say that on this, the merit is more of those people who train us and give us information so that we can concentrate on the work even in extreme conditions. As far as the second question, the training of a test pilot has some specifics that are very similar to those of an astronaut. So I would say that all my baggage of training as combat pilot and then test pilot has contributed into giving me a background of contingency 
crises and emergencies. An astronaut, like a pilot, is prepared to, to uh, think about contingencies using checklists and procedures. But in an emergency, when there are no procedures, you have to understand by yourself how to, how to uh, resolve issues. This is when your training comes into play. And so this is how, as a test pilot, I've been able to experiment and, and utilize this formation so that responding to emergencies becomes second nature. You in this mission have worked on many experiments, Italian, European, and you've done four EVAs. So, so th there has to have been a, a time in which you have made us very proud to have an Italian. So you're inspiring the next generations. Do you feel this responsibility? Mr. President, the responsibility of those who have a visible platform is the same for everyone. It doesn't have anything to do with followers. We have, we have to maintain responsibility of corresponding and sending a message that's positive of what we're doing. I believe that people do not follow me as Luca Parabitano, but they follow me as the astronaut because I represent a, a pinnacle of excellence of, of an Italian product as you have uh, as you have mentioned during your opening remarks so I feel responsible in that I'm an ambassador of a series of values that are Italian European and that have to do with the world in which we live and then I'd like to remind that our president Mattarella has talked about hope so I hope that I can give a message of hope that my interpretation is that I have the possibility ahead of me to be able to complete some goals. I, I've been very privileged in this and that Italy has always given me this opportunity, this great hope to keep pressing on with goals to reach. And I believe that people understand this. In my message, I always want to talk about hope, give it to young people, especially, and those who are in school today, those studying in college, that there is the opportunity to look ahead and, and set some projects and goals to reach. So while you're talking, I see a beautiful big Italian flag behind you. Can you tell us how much of Italy is in this project, in this space station? How much technology was developed in our country and that is present? on the station. Mr. President, thank you for the question. For once, I would like to utilize an, adject an adjective that I always use very seldom, which is pride. As, as Italian, I can be proud of the presence of our country here on board, represented not only by me and the flag, but also by the module in which I am. The engineering structure of the Columbus Lab has been built in Italy, as has been Note 2, Note 3, the PMM module, which is a logistic module, as well the cupola, which is where the majority of our pictures are taken. In this moment, I we also have on board the greatest cargo ship of the uh, ISS program, which is the Cygnus, which just arrived here. It's It just arrived, and it's the most modern. And this, too, was built in Italy by our industries. The habitation module, the pressurized habitation module, right now is almost about 50% an Italian product, 
Questo per quanto riguarda l'ingegneria aerospaziale. Ma concerning the aerospace engineering, but then we have all the science that has come here from Italy, absolutely innovative experiments that I have participated to, especially recently, last month, we installed in the Russian module with the uh, Russian-Italian cooperation a photography system to be able to photograph, if I'm not mistaken, almost, almost 100,000 pictures per second, some ultraviolet pictures so that we can see a spectrum that we've never seen before. Uh, just recently, we just sent back to Earth an experiment from the uh, Italian space, uh, space Agency, how an experiment that possono rientrare va, va, cambiano qui sulla sulla how animals change here and and how they can reintegrate and also experiments on physiology of which i have been a subject here in the columbus module a study on how the metabolism changes human metabolism and how to balance the expenditure of energy with th that that is ingested through food how do you how do you balance it and how all the sounds externally in the space station have an influence on the human ear so these are just some examples of Italian participation from a scientific technological sense so I can say with pride that perhaps our financial contribution is at the third in the third place out of all the countries out of the European Space Agents, Agency. However, when it comes to scientific and technological, technological contribution, we're definitely up there on the podium. Thank you so much. Everything very interesting. I'm so happy to be able to talk to you. I have to let Honorevole Fraccaro. Good day, Colonel. We spoke on October 2nd over the phone when you took over command of the ISS. Since then, we have pressed on with great effort the mission of our Prime Minister to augment our financial contribution into space, and we've had some great results. Thank you with the collaboration of everyone. I believe that space will have an, a geostrategic important over the years and an important impact on technology and industry for our country, but also social, because fortunately, you astronauts remind us constantly what Earth looks like from above, that there's an ecosystem that we must protect all together. I would like to conclude by inviting you and, and this is a request that we are going to use to close this contact. We are, wh when you come back to Italy, to Rome, to Earth, we'd like to invite you to the comment so that you can debrief us on the final results of your mission, as well as the experiments that you're conducting from Italy that also have the goal of improving life on Earth. So an invitation to come to Rome, to Palazzo Chigi, so that you can inform us on the great experience that you have carried on. Secretary, thank you so much. I remember the uh, phone call, and this invitation is for me an occasion to demonstrate how the impact, technological and scientific, and clearly of exploration of uh, human spaceflight is present in everyday life of those who live on Earth. And if possible, I can use these three elements of uh, science, exploration and technology to inspire our young people and well, all the uh, citizens, actually, to push the concept that you've expressed, the concept that space is a platform that allows us to see 
not only what's beyond, as, as my mission is called, but also how fragile our world is, the world we live in today. So a push for everyone to do a little bit better. Thank you so much for the link, for your attention, and for your time, which is the, the greatest gift. Station. This is Houston ACR. That concludes our event as we count down to 20 continuing years of humans living and working on the International Space Station. And thank you to all participants from ESA. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. Expressed the concept that space is a platform that allows us to see not only what's beyond, 